All right, thanks for watching. And today I would like to go over how to prove certain trig identities. And I wish I could give you a magic formula that will solve everything, but unfortunately, the answer is simply to practice, practice, practice until you get a feel for this. So in German, there's a nice saying, it's called Fingerspitzengefühl. So it's the feeling you get on the tip of your fingers. And however, there are two identities I do recommend you to know. One is simply cosine squared of x plus sine squared of x equals one. And also one plus tangent squared of x equals secant squared of x. And in fact, for a first warm up, how about we prove the second identity? So you don't even have to memorize it. So example one, let's show one plus tangent squared of theta or tangent squared of x equals secant squared of x. And for this, again, how do you show an identity? You start with the left-hand side, you do some math until you get the right-hand side. So here, the important thing to know, tangent is simply sine over cosine. So you simply write tangent squared as sine of x over cosine of x squared. And this becomes one plus sine squared x over cosine squared x. Well, now you have one plus a fraction. So how about you simply put this under a common denominator? So this becomes, so the denominator becomes cosine squared of x. And then, well, this one becomes cosine squared of x. Essentially, you write one as cosine squared over cosine squared. And then plus sine squared of x. But now remember this important identity, cosine squared plus sine squared is just one. So what this becomes, in the end, we get one over cosine squared, which if you want, it's just one over cosine x squared. And remember the identity, one over cosine becomes secant. So it's just secant of x squared. I don't know where it writes O, but that's a C. And that becomes secant squared of x. So again, to recap, we started with one plus tangent squared of x. And then we did some algebra, writing tangent as sine over cosine, putting it on the common denominator, using a Pythagorean identity. And lastly, uh, the definition of secant to get one plus tangent squared equals secant squared. You see, and that's how all those trig identities work. You start with the left-hand side and you go up all the way to the right-hand side. All right, let's do a couple more examples. So I have five examples today, Plant. So example two, how about one over one minus sine of x plus one over one plus sine of x? Well, you see you have the addition of two fractions. So just put it on a common denominator. So the denominator here is one minus sine of x times one plus sine of x. Well, to complete this to one minus sine of x times one plus sine of x, you put a one plus sine of x. And then here to complete this, you get one minus sine of x. And here's the thing, for all those identities, there's supposed to be a magical cancellation. Like here, you know, sine of x cancels out and you're just left with two over. Now, this is of the form a minus b times a plus b, which is a squared minus b squared. And you're just left with one squared, which is one minus b squared, which is sine squared of x. But now again, remember, cosine squared plus sine squared equals one. So one minus, so cosine squared is one minus sine squared, which is just what you have here. 
So in the end, what this becomes is simply the following. This just becomes two over cosine squared x. Again, depending on the problem, that's fine, but we can even simplify this a little bit more. So this becomes two over one over cosine x squared. And again, remember the rule, one over cosine is secant. So this actually becomes two secant squared x. So without even looking at the right hand side, uh, you can find this. So again, simplify, you know, easier said than done and expect some miraculous uh, cancellation. All right, what about the next one? Example three, how about cotangent of theta, sine of theta, and then secant of theta? Now, I'll let you in on a little um, secret. I hate secant, cotangent, and cosecant because why have more uh, names for something slightly different? So for this, because I hate it, let's just write this in terms of the functions that we know. So secant is just one over cosine. Why make stuff more complicated? Cotangent, just as its name says, it's one over tangent, which is one over sine over cosine. And again, remember you flip this and you get cosine over sine. And so what you're left with is cosine of theta over sine of theta. And you see, just by rewriting those expressions in terms of what they actually mean, you see this beautiful cancellation. This and this cancels out and you're left with one. Wow, amazing, huh? So again, my suggestion is secant, cotangent, cosecant, just write this in terms of sines and cosines. That makes stuff much easier. So next example, in fact, another one, cotangent, of x over tangent of x plus cotangent of x. Not cosine, but cotangent. Okay. Well, cotangent, again, instead of saying cotangent, just say one over tangent. Why make stuff so complicated? Tangent of x plus one over tangent of x. And the cool thing is, well, you have this fraction, you can put this on a common denominator. So this becomes one over tangent of x over, so this whole thing you wanna put under tangent of x. So tangent times tangent. So tangent squared of x plus one. And the nice thing is this simplifies. So this just cancels out. And I believe you're left with, one over tangent squared of x plus one. And remember there's this identity for tangent squared plus one, that's just secant squared. Secant and you shall find. So this becomes one over secant squared of x. But again, why make stuff complicated? Just use one over cosine. So it's one over one over cosine of x squared, and that just becomes one over one over cosine squared of x, and that's just cosine squared of x. Again, in French you say, pourquoi faire simple si on peut faire compliqué? Why make it easy if we could make it hard? So again, for this, uh, for, for first of all, get rid of cotangent, right, it is one over tangent, put it under a common denominator, and then uses one of the two fundamental identities, and then this simply becomes cosine squared. Last but not least, again, of the same, um, same idea, how about cotangent squared of 2x plus secant squared of 2x minus tangent squared of 2x? Oof, right? So again, very, very ugly. 
And again, cotangent just write it as one over tangent. So cotangent squared is one over tangent squared of two X. Now here's the thing you could write, you know, you could simplify secant as one over cosine squared, but remember one plus tangent squared equals secant squared. So if you put tangent squared on the right hand side, you get one equals secant squared minus tangent squared. So this, this thing actually simplifies surprisingly to one. So this gives you one. And then, well, I know you could use cotangent squared plus one is cosecant squared, but again, I'm not a big fan. So let's just write this in terms of our formulas. So this becomes one, again, put it on the common denominator. So tangent squared of two X. So one plus tangent squared of two X. And then this simplifies, right? One plus tangent squared is secant squared. By the way, the fact that we have two X doesn't matter at all. So we're left with secant squared of X of two X over tangent squared of two X. And again, just use one over cosine. Why make stuff complicated? So one over cosine squared of two X and this is sine squared of two X over cosine squared of two X. And again, this simplifies and you're left with one over sine squared of two X, which in the end, because cosecant squared of two X. So again, why you have time for the exam? Why, why memorize so many formulas if you don't have to? All right, I hope you like this little extravaganza. If you want to see more math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.